Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new lecture of our course on processing in memory systems. Today, we are going to present another real world processing in memory architecture, the one presented by Alibaba at uh, ISSCC this year. It's uh, based on hybrid bounding and uh, contains processing near memory engines for recommendation systems. Remember that we have uh, presented already a few real world processing memory architectures. The first one was the admin PIM architecture that is based on DDR4 memory. And each PIM chip is extended with um, several DRAM processing units or DPUs. In particular, in the current generation, there are eight DRAM banks and attached to each of them, one of these DPUs. We also presented uh, one proposal from Samsung called PIM DRAM, or also called HVM PIM. It's based on HVM2 memory, where some of the uh, memory layers have been modified uh, in order to incorporate some uh, PIM units that are uh, CMD units of 16 lanes, 16 lanes, and they operate on 16 bit floating point numbers. Another uh, similar architecture. Uh, that we presented as well proposed by ESK Hynix is this accelerator in memory that is based on GDDR6 memory. As you can see on the slide, there is uh, one processing unit connected to each memory bank. And these processing units contain multipliers and another tree. And also um, they have the ability to uh, uh, execute different activation functions based on lookup tables. Another interesting innovation in this architecture is that they, it includes a, a supplementary SRAM buffer that is called the global buffer of size two kilobytes that is useful to move uh, data around between processing units and between banks. And more recently in our last lecture, we presented another proposal from Samsung that is called AXDIM. In this case, it's a DIM-based processing in memory system that has been prototyped and tested for recommendation systems. As you see in this slide, it's um, uh, a DIM, uh, AXDIM is a DIM with a standard DIM interface and two ranks of uh, memory chips and, and FPGA fabric and configurable fabric where we can implement different types of accelerators. In particular, uh, this um, uh, work uh, presented the, the, the accelerator for recommendation systems. We are also going to talk today as well about the recommendation systems because that's the main target of these Alibaba 3D logic to DRAM hybrid bounding with processing near memory ending. And this is the paper, as I said before, presented in ISSCC this year um, in February. And uh, the motivation of this paper, as you can imagine, is the memory wall, the data movement bottleneck that we have uh, discussed several times in this course or over the whole uh, course indeed. Um, memory bandwidth is not enough for many machine learning workloads. And um, in the paper, they uh, point to several important applications like natural language processing, recommendation systems, graph neural networks, or multitask online inference. Uh, the paper also presents an interesting processing in memory classification that reminds me the classification that we have in our uh, book chapter that we I have mentioned uh, also several times in this course and discuss uh, with a little bit of detail at the, in the very first lecture of this course. Um, according to uh, this paper, there are different types of processing in memory systems. The first one of them is the traditional um, that the traditional system that cannot be considered processing in memory, of course, where we place uh, CPUs, but also GPUs and FPGAs. As you may know, GPUs and FPGAs these days are starting to um, replace conventional uh, DDR memories with uh, HVM memories that provide a uh, much higher bandwidth. And that's what the paper calls 2.5D PNM. And here we can. Uh, place as well, uh, recent F, uh, GPUs and also FPEAs. Um, if we think or we talk about the uh, processing in memory systems themselves, uh, these um, admin PIM architecture could be placed here in this uh, 2D processing near memory where the uh, processing in memory capabilities are inside the uh, memory chip itself. And also here we can place AIM from SK Hynix. Uh, the paper uh, considers in DRAM the proposal from Samsung like a, a 3D design because it's based on HVM2 memory, of course, 
But instead of having uh, in, in FinDRAM or in HVMP, instead of having the processing elements here in the logic layer of the 3D stack, uh, in reality, we have the processing units, we have the pin units in some of the memory layers. That's why I'm not so, uh, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't agree so much with uh, calling FinDRAM uh, 3D stack um, based processing near memory. I think it's more something between uh, this uh, model here because it's definitely based on HVM memory, but the fact that the uh, memory that the memory layers are modified to integrate the processing unit there in the memory layers themselves reminds me more like this um, um, like, uh, scheme with the computation in the in the same chip as the memory. Uh, in this classification, we are missing something that is uh, based on a DIM or placing uh, the processing units near the ranks, like uh, AX DIM. I don't think it's uh, uh, well represented in this classification. That's why I'm placing it uh, somehow in here between 2D and 2.5D, even though I don't think it's um, any of both. And finally, uh, the proposal from Alibaba is uh, exactly here in, in this um, hybrid bonding based processing near memory. And the last thing, and, and, and we haven't talked about this in this course yet in detail because there are no, let's say, real world architectures or at least commercially available architectures are what uh, in the paper they call 2D computing memory, but in this course we have called it processing using memory. And there are uh, different proposals here. MBN, uh, MBN based pin is one example of, uh, of this uh, type of processing using memory, but also DRAM based proposals, for example, the uh, recent in DRAM that we will present and discuss later uh, in this course. And this is the classification in our uh, book chapter that is uh, available, as you know, in, in archive and uh, definitely very much recommended reading for everyone interested in processing in memory. But now let's talk about the, this uh, HVPNM architecture from uh, Alibaba. Um, interesting, uh, a special characteristic of this architecture is that it's based on a logic die and a DRAM die that are vertically bonded uh, by a technique called hybrid bonding. As you see it, in the slide, it looks something like this. We have one layer of DRAM, we have one layer of um, uh, this uh, logic die for uh, logic uh, processing elements. Uh, the uh, DRAM die is composed of these uh, DRAM cores of one gigabit. And in the logic die, as we will discuss, we have two main types of engines. One is called the neural engine. The other one is called the match engine. And they are targeted at different steps of the recommendation system. Uh, you can take a look at this cross-section illustration that I think it's uh, very clear about how these uh, chip is uh, created. We have the logic die at the bottom, we have the DRAM die uh, at the top, and uh, in between the, we have the uh, hybrid bonding. We are going to uh, talk a little bit more in detail about this hybrid bonding later, but um, first of all, let's uh, continue introducing the architecture and let's also recap a little bit on recommendation systems because they are the main target of this architecture. In recommendation systems, as um, as you may know, there is there is one first step where the um, features of either the, the, the data and the database uh, and the query, um, uh, the data in the queries uh, are extracted. But once we have these features, we go to the recommendation system itself. That first of all performs something called course ring matching to select some candidates and then classifies the more important or ranks the more important uh, candidates or the more representative candidates in the second step called fine green ranking. Uh, these two steps are mainly executed on the match engine, the coarse green matching on the match engine of the HP PNM architecture and the fine green ranking, or at least one uh, important step of this fine green ranking in the neural engine, as we will see. We are going to talk in detail about this architecture, but let me very briefly remind you um, the a few things that we talked in our last lecture about recommendation systems. Um, as I mentioned before, in a recommendation system, we will first have the feature generation for classification, object detection, and feature extraction. This um, step is usually compute bound according to the um, uh, paper from Alibaba. So that, that's why it's usually a good fit for GPUs. 
um, the second part, which in reality is the a most um, relevant part for uh, the recommendation system itself is this matching and ranking, the coarse grain matching and the fine grain matching ranking that um, both steps are characterized by Alibaba folks as memory bound. Actually in the paper, um, they provide the interesting numbers, more than 89% of the application of the latency of the application is spent on the, um, accessing memory and more than 82% of the energy. These two steps are typically run on CPU. And these two steps are actually the steps that I presented and mentioned in our previous uh, lecture where candidate recommendations are first retrieved and then run. In this, uh, first of all, candidate generation and second, the ranking. As you may remember here, we have two different models, one model, one filtering model in order to extract the candidates, this would match, this could correspond to the coarse grain matching, while in the uh, second step, we have the ranking model where we rank the most, uh, um, let's say, relevant, most uh, representative uh, candidates in, in, in the order of uh, 10 candidates or so that are going to be presented to the users. Both filtering and ranking model are typically based on these model that we see here where both uh, dense and sparse feature features, continuous features and categorical features are used and processed in order to, uh, first of all, filter and then uh, uh, rank. Um, this uh, model is based on the uh, deep learning recommendation model proposed by Facebook in 2019. And you may remember this slide as well, um, where we talk a little bit more about the DLRM recommendation system from um, uh, Facebook. Uh, here we see the dense features, these continuous inputs, these continuous features that are typically processed by DNA layers, like for example, multi-layer perception, fully connected layers. And according to um, the analysis in previous papers, is a like computation dominated, is that compute bound um, a step while the sparse features uh, for categorical inputs are processed by indexing large embedding tables. Uh, actually, these um, um, in, embedding uh, operations uh, consist of lookup and pooling operations um, to the uh, embedding tables, and um, they typically follow a gather reduce pattern that in different frameworks has uh, different operators. In CAFE 2, for example, are these um, a sparse length or SLS operators that essentially perform this gather and reduction operation. Um, these uh, steps have been characterized both the SLS operators and the fully connected layers of uh, the multi-layer uh, perception have been uh, characterized, the performance bottleneck have been identified. One uh, interesting observation about them and especially about the SLS operators is that they are very low floating point intensity. And when the batch increases, there is also higher memory footprint and higher memory intensity. And actually, as the batch increases, and also as we increase the number of parallel threads executing the SLS operators, we see that the memory bandwidth can be easily saturated. Uh, one uh, important uh, the, the thing that we have to observe here is that the um, fully connected layers, the MLP that is using the uh, DNM for um, dense features is uh, characterized in, in, in most of the cases as compute bound. But also, as you can see here, for very uh, small batches or for small batches, uh, it's mostly memory bound in this case, right? And that's why I believe um, the um, uh, Alibaba folks have also uh, characterized this fine grain mat uh, ranking as a memory bound operation, probably because they are using um, a small batches or even batch uh, one. That's something that is not clearly specified in their paper. So let's uh, talk a little bit more in detail about these two steps. First of all, the, in the coarse green matching, uh, we use as inputs uh, a binary uh, feature vectors uh, with uh, 512 dimensions. As you can see here, first thing to do is to calculate the distance between the features from the query, the query data and the features from the um, um, data in the, in the database. And, um, and, and, and based on these, we uh, can uh, already um, select like, in the order of magnitude of a thousand representative 
items for, that are the candidate recommendations. And in this uh, uh, particular experiment uh, from Alibaba, they are uh, selecting these uh, 1,000 candidates from uh, 4,000, 4, 40,000 uh, items. After we have done this first coarse grain matching, we go to the fine grain uh, ranking or the fine grain uh, matching where uh, first of all, uh, the features are in this case are uh, uh, eight bits and they have uh, 1024 dimensions. As you can see, these features are fed to the um, um, multi-layer perception of three layers in order for the similarity prediction. And after that, we reduce uh, <clears throat> the number of candidates from a thousand to a hundred that are also ranked. As you can see, because it's also indicated here in the figure, these and these steps are executed on the uh, match engine that we are going to describe next. This step is also executed in the match engine while this one is executed on the neural engine uh, that is like um, uh, the, the engine that is uh, designed for acceleration of the uh, NLP as we are going to see. So let's talk with a little bit more detail about this uh, 3D logic to DRAM hybrid bonding. Uh, first of all, well, you have already uh, seen this slide. Remember that this architecture is composed by a DRAM die and a logic die. Uh, these two are fabricated, manufactured uh, independently. The um, uh, DRAM wafer and the logic wafer are um, uh, manufactured independently and then they are rotated face down and glued in some way, uh, bonded by using this uh, hybrid bonding. Uh, some important characteristic of this uh, hybrid bonding is that it's the um, um, copper to copper direct fusion that is uh, down at uh, low, uh, really low temperatures, uh, below 350 um, um, degrees. And um, one interesting characteristic and advantage of this uh, technique over other 3D, st st 3D stacking technologies is that it allows us to have uh, way lower pitch size uh, compared, for example, this uh, three micrometer to the uh, typical pitch size in HVM memory, uh, 35 micrometers. And this low pitch allows us to have much higher bandwidth between the layers. And that's uh, why you can compare this 1.32 terabytes per second to this uh, 460 uh, gigabytes per second in um, HVM2E. Uh, here you have uh, some photographs of the uh, DRAM die and the logic die where you can uh, see the neural engine region and you can also see the uh, match engine region. Um, as you can see, they uh, both run at a relatively low frequency, 300 megahertz, but that's kind of a, a relatively uh, uh, common uh, frequency in processing in memory architectures as we have seen in previous lectures as well. So let's go a little bit more in detail uh, with the architecture of this uh, HVPNM. First of all, the DRAM die. This DRAM die, as you can see um, on the slide, is composed by six by six, by this um, grid of six by six uh, DRAM cores of size one gigabit. Uh, inside each of the uh, DRAM cores, uh, we have uh, eight banks. As you can see here, this, uh, so for this uh, section of two by two, uh, we have um, these uh, four DRAM cores. In each DRAM core, we have eight banks of uh, 128 megabits. As you see, there is uh, also uh, on-chip ECC, like uh, eight megabits per every 128 megabits. And there is also like um, a, a base of 128 bit, the IO per bank, as you can see. In the logic die, uh, the corresponding, I mean, uh, underneath these uh, four blocks of uh, DRAM, what we find is um, these um, uh, neural engines and match engines that they can access uh, the DRAM cores through the corresponding memory controllers and um, physical interface, as you can see uh, in the figure. Uh, it's uh, interesting to highlight here that the HV, the hybrid bonding, imposes uh, design constraints on the location of the memory controllers and the uh, physical interfaces, as you can see. So we have to, when, when placing one DRAM, the DRAM layer on the logic layer, um, uh, obviously this um, uh, area here should match where this other area here in the DRAM 
uh, core uh, is, right? And here is where we have the row buffer and also where we have the uh, control uh, for accessing rows and columns in the uh, DRAM uh, banks. Now in the logic die, what we can see is the match engine and the neural, net, uh, the neural engine for matching and ranking in the recommendation system. Here you can see a, a, a let's say, a, closer view of, of these two uh, engines. Uh, here on the left-hand side, we have the match engine. On the right-hand side, we have the neural engine. As you can see, both can access uh, their own uh, DRAM blocks by, uh, via this uh, dual mode interface and the corresponding memory controllers. There are like eight memory controllers, probably one per each bank um, of these uh, DRAM block and they have direct access to their own um, DRAM blocks, but they can also access other DRAM blocks uh, via the on-chip bus, as you can see on the slide. Regarding the dual mode interface, it's called dual mode because it allows the um, engines to either access a single channel, one of the eight banks, or the eight banks in lockstep in order to achieve full bandwidth. And, um, and you can see here that it's composed by several input and output uh, FIFO queues, multiplexers, and controllers. And here you can see a, a closer view of this um, um, dual mode interface um, for, with the support for single channel model, uh, mode and, and lockstep mode and um, read uh, and write counters as well to support the bars requests. And, and as you can see here in the, in the control unit. So now let's uh, take a closer look at the match engine. This match engine, as I have already mentioned, is responsible for coarse green matching. And uh, it's right here on this um, left-hand side of this figure. And here you can see a closer view of it and the different components, including the, uh, the, 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 the two different cores that can be accessed with the corresponding memory controllers and the, and the um, uh, dual uh, mode interfaces. And, and here one address generator, distance calculator, and this also this max heap uh, top K engine. We are going to talk about them um, in a little bit more detail. First of all, the address generator, um, as you can see, it generates the address for the uh, input query. And it has also like a mode selection for different access patterns. And this mode selection is uh, configurable via registers, as you see here. We can um, select the bars length, the or the strike, for example. Then we also find here in this match engine this uh, distance calculator. The distance calculator obtains the similarity between the input query and the feature vectors, and it computes Hamming distance of two uh, 512 uh, bit vectors um, that come from the data from the feature vectors and from the query data, we perform the Hamming distance calculation uh, using these partial pop counts as well and, and one other. And after that, the distance that represents how similar or dissimilar are the query and the data, um, we compare it to the uh, root of the max heap that belongs to the top K engine that we are going to describe in the uh, next slide. Depending on how it compares, uh, we will record this uh, candidate as a uh, candidate that matches or not. Let's take a look at this um, top K engine. It's um, composed by the max heap hardware block and also a data structure uh, for 1000 nodes. These nodes are represented by an address and also the uh, distance between the um, um, query and the feature vectors um, for the shortest uh, 1000 distances. And um, there is a, the, the, this uh, top K unit, uh, top K engine receives a new input, a, a new input every uh, two cycles. And uh, in the next slide, we are going to see an example of how it operates. You can imagine the data structure as a tree, as you can uh, see here, and, uh, and the way that we are going to um, uh, incorporate new nodes based on their distance is uh, by comparing uh, the, 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 the specific value, the specific distance in the input to the values that we have stored in, in the tree, right? By following this procedure that we see here. 
So um, in this particular example, we receive one input, a distance equal to 20. Uh, observe that in the very beginning, uh, the uh, all nodes in the in the in this uh, data structure are initialized to the maximum possible value. So first of all, what we do is comparing uh, these 20 to the uh, maximum value in the in the in the root of the max heap because it's uh, less than this maximum. Then we include we incorporate these 20 into this uh, whole data structure. And now cycle after cycle, we compare the distance to the left child. And if uh, it's less than the less left child, then we swap the left child. If not, we swap with the right, uh, right child. So first comparison here, uh, 20 is less than max. So we swap um, here again, we, we compare 20 to max. So we swap at this point, we receive another input. Remember that we have the top K engine receives a new input every two cycles. So now the input is um, equal to four. Again, we compare to the uh, root of the uh, max heap and then we uh, swap as needed. So perform comparison here, we swap at the same time. We can also perform this comparison uh, 20 compared to this max. So we'll also have to swap and so on and so forth. The next element that we, or in the next distance that uh, the, the uh, top K engine receives is this input equal to, distance equal to. So again, we have to swap here, but also observe that as if at this point, we are comparing these four with this 20. And because uh, four is less than 20, we will swap here as well. Same as in the next cycle, we are also going to swap this two with this 20. Now the next input is uh, eight and we proceed the same way. Observe that uh, sometime later, a few cycles later, um, the <clears throat> nodes have been rearranged in this way on the left hand side, on the left uh, branch, let's say the left uh, children are all the uh, smallest values, smallest distances that we have received. Uh, on the right, we have uh, those distances that are larger. And a few cycles later, and after receiving a few more inputs, the, um, uh, the, 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 the data structure, this uh, tree here, will look like this, more or less. Observe that here, um, the children on the left-hand side, we have the uh, smallest distances, while on the right-hand side, the right children, we have the larger distances. But in the end, this uh, data structure will contain the 1,000 shorter distances that the um, uh, match engine has found. So after we have that, we have to go for the fine green ranking. And this is uh, performed partially in the neural engine that is responsible for similarity prediction. Uh, here you can see a, a closer view of the neural engine um, again, we have here the DRAM blocks, we have the dual mode interfaces, we have some registers, address generator, and then we have the compute uh, units themselves. Let's uh, talk about them. The first of them is this uh, vector process unit. In this vector process unit, observe that there are uh, two separated parts. One of them is um, uh, focused on uh, obtaining or calculating activations. It's based on lookup tables, as you can see um, in the figure, and it has support for yellow and also for um, exponent. The second unit here is for uh, transposition. It's composed by these uh, arrays, these two-dimensional uh, arrays of registers and, 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 and performs a transposition of a 16 by 16 matrix in this uh, ping pong array. As you can see also uh, in the figure, uh, uh, rows are written and then columns are read. And that's the way of performing the transposition. We write uh, rows and then we read uh, columns and this way we, we can read the transpose matrix. The other interesting uh, component of this neural engine is this gem unit that is uh, for matrix uh, multiplication and it's essentially a 32 by 32 fully pipeline systolic array that supports or operates on uh, int eight values. Partial sums are accumulated in this um, accumulator buffer, as you can see here. And, and here on the left, you can see the 32 by 32 uh, systolic array. There are not many details about this systolic array in the paper. In the end, it's a very short paper of only two pages. But if you want to learn about uh, systolic arrays, I can recommend you uh, this lecture from uh, Professor Moodley. The neural engine also uh, uh, has a, its own uh, controller. This controller is a 
finite state machine of five states, uh, five working states and one idle state. And as you can see, each of the working states corresponds to one instruction, whether it's a read or write uh, to memory, or it's a, um, a transposition activation function and the uh, matrix matrix multiplication. In this slide, you can see the uh, key feature summary and also comparison to other processing in memory architectures. Observe that uh, the authors here are comparing to FinDRAM, to AppMem. They also compare to a uh, 2D uh, computing memory um, um, architecture that is based on um, SRAM uh, and also to an NVIDIA A100 GPU. Um, in principle, and I have, as I have mentioned in, in previous lectures as well, I don't think that it really makes sense to have this direct comparison, especially because um, these different architectures might have been designed for different purposes. While we have uh, the admin PIM architecture or even the A100 GPU that are more general purpose and can support many different types of workloads. Uh, FinDRAM, for example, is uh, targeted at neural network inference. It essentially uh, performs multiplications and additions, while in this work, um, they are focusing on recommendation systems. I think it's uh, very good and interesting to have all these numbers here, to check them, compare them, and so on, but I don't think that it makes sense to have a direct comparison of, for example, this work, this uh, HB PNM architecture to FinDRAM or admin because they are targeted at different purposes. Well, this is uh, the processing in memory classification, as, uh, as you may remember, the classification that we have in our book chapter. We can uh, take a, you know, like a, a uh, some, as a summary of uh, the different real world processing in memory architectures that uh, we have covered and are covering in this course, uh, we can uh, talk about the similarities and differences of the current team systems that uh, we have discussed. I think that there are uh, two very clear similarities. The first of them is that all the architectures that we have presented that are already commercially available or hopefully will be commercially available very soon are um, real-world processing in memory architectures that follow a processing near memory approach. Another uh, common characteristic of these architectures is that they are based on, uh, DD, on, on DRAM memory. However, there are differences uh, among these architectures as well, even though most of them, we can say that they are nearby, like AppMem, FinDRAM, AIM, or uh, this HVM PNM that HV PNM that we have presented today. Uh, we also have AXDIM that is near chip or on DIM or near rank, um, as you uh, may prefer. Uh, it's uh, also the different processing elements that they have. Um, in AppMen, we have general purpose cores, while in the other architecture, it's more, they are more like a special function units because they have been presented, prototyped, and tested uh, for uh, specific applications, either neural networks or uh, recommendation systems. Also, the uh, computing paradigm that they follow. In AppMen, we see that they are fine-grained multi-threaded. They, they are scalar cores, while in FinDRAM or AIM or AM, AXTEAM, they are more like uh, SIMD processors. And also in, or, or also in this um, HPPNM, we have seen that it incorporates this neural engine that is essentially a systolic array. Also, the different data types that they use, there are some of them that are natively uh, integral, like AppMem or HPPNM, uh, while others are a floating point, for example, uh, FinDRAM. But uh, be, uh, among these uh, working on floating point uh, values, we have FinDRAM that supports uh, uh, floating point 16 bits from uh, the, the uh, IEEE um, 754 standard, while AIM, for example, supports this uh, B float 16 or AXIM, at least the prototype that we studied, uh, work with 32-bit uh, floating point values. And finally, the different types of DRAM memory. Some of them uh, DDR4 memory or LPDDR4, like uh, HVPNM, but also um, um, DDR4 graphics, the uh, GDDR6 uh, in AIM, and the uh, three stack memory HVM2 uh, in film DRAM. And here again, our classification uh, out of this classification, I would say that there is only one group 
of uh, you know, uh, processing in memory types that we have not discussed in detail yet, even though we have introduced it uh, in the first lecture of this course as a processing using memory group. In a later lecture, we are going to talk uh, in more detail about uh, some um, interesting prototype of this uh, um, processing in memory, processing use in memory group. Uh, we are going to talk about one uh, prototype that implements processing using memory using DRAM. We are also going to talk in detail about the SIMDRAM framework that is a way of exploiting uh, bit serial um, uh, computation in, in a, in a, in a SIMD manner inside the DRAM arrays. Um, but um, there are no uh, real world systems, at least there are no commercially available systems yet. The closest thing to reality was presented uh, a couple of years ago in the micro 2019, a little bit more than two years. It's this compute DRAM work that is uh, extremely interesting because they were able to execute some processing using memory operations using off the shelf uh, DRAM. Um, in order to do so, they uh, used an FPGA based memory controller that uh, is um, from the Safari group by using this FPGA-based memory controller, they are able to uh, change the timing parameters, the way that the DRAM chips are accessed. And uh, by doing so, they were able to um, somehow uh, uh, per execute row clone operations that are for copying entire rows um, for, in, in the, in, inside the same uh, memory subarray, one a source row to one destination row, and also they were able to perform uh, logic operations in an ambit style, as um, we uh, introduced in our first lecture. And we are going to see, uh, as I said, more in detail in a couple of later lectures. Let me very briefly show you what they do in order to do this row clone or row uh, copy operation in, inside the uh, same chip, inside the uh, same, the same uh, DRAM subarray. What they do is playing with these timing parameters between the activation and the pre-charge commands. By reducing them, they are able to copy one row to another row because at the point where the second row is activated, the um, um, the value, the, the voltage in the bit line is still uh, different from uh, half VDD, either above or below half VDD. And when the second row is activated, that uh, chart is um, uh, copied, it's moved to the uh, capacitors of the row. Um, they were also able to perform in some of the chips bitwise AND and bitwise OR operations in the bitwise, bitwise AND, for example, what they do is like uh, shortening uh, all the, this um, uh, latency between activate and pre-charge uh, very much. And by doing so, uh, one third row is, so when they are switching from one row to another row, one third row is uh, activated because its address appears in the address bus. Um, we are going to see in uh, a little bit, so in, in more detail in a later lecture, that's why I don't want to spend uh, so much time today, uh, but definitely super interesting work. As you'll see, we will discuss the experimental methodology as well, where they use the uh, FPEA with the uh, uh, soft NC hardware and, uh, and also a, a Peltier plate heater in order to change the temperature of the uh, DRAM chips. They tested like uh, 32 DDR3 modules around 256 uh, DRAM chips and they um, show, uh, they explain in their paper how they perform um, the they, they experiment with the different um, DRAM modules uh, using SoftNC. Uh, first of all, they selected a random subarray, they filled the subarray with random data, then they uh, perform these uh, activate pre-charge activate commands uh, with given um, uh, latencies of T1 and T2. They play with these latencies and, and see uh, what happens in the uh, subarray, what happens in the destination rows, if whether the uh, copy operation really happened or whether the ambit, the, the, the logic and or the logic or operation really happened. And they show in their uh, work um, uh, the, their observations, um, as you see in these um, uh, different figures here, they are uh, presenting four uh, 
chips from different vendors. They are presenting what are the combinations of latencies T1 and T2, where they uh, were able to perform either raw copy operations or also these uh, logic operations as well. Not in so many uh, chips as you see, but this was this one's from SK Hynix as well. We're able to support these uh, logic operations. As I said, uh, we are going to talk in way more detail about this uh, proposal and actually presenting one uh, prototype that uh, we have developed in more group. In the future, I also expect that we will see many more works combining both ideas of processing near memory and processing uh, using memory. And actually last year, we already presented a very interesting work for acceleration of uh, graph mining algorithms in processing in memory systems with Processing near memory and processing using memory is the size of paper that um, yeah, you can find in this slide, also uh, including a link to the paper if you want to uh, learn and read more about this proposal. And this is all for today. Uh, we will continue next Thursday with a new lecture for processing in memory course. There is a, a lot more to come. As I mentioned, processing using memory architectures, frameworks, and prototypes, but we will also uh, describe in a, a more detail specific case studies, for example, um, the sparse matrix vector multiplication, which is an important primitive for many, many uh, applications. It's also like a um, clearly memory bound application in processor centric systems. Uh, we will discuss our implementations of SPMB on the admin PIM architecture, and we will also um, uh, talk uh, about other uh, case studies, like for example, neural network accelerator accelerators for the edge based on processing in memory, same as um, uh, accelerators for HTAP databases. And uh, we will uh, finish this course discussing uh, the, uh, additional challenges that still need to be solved for the adoption uh, of uh, processing in memory in uh, real world systems. So that's all for today. I really appreciate your attention. Um, thank you very much. Hope to see you uh, in, um, in future lectures as well. Bye-bye.